Hello and welcome to this review of Lord Calvert Canadian. Canadian whiskey, a blend of choice matured whiskeys. Okay, this is a bottle from the Beam Company days. You can see that the bottle design is the same as you get with Kessler, American blended whiskey. Okay, nice looking bottle. Uh, age 36 months, which is the minimum for Canadian uh, whiskey. Imported and bottled by Calvert, Deerfield, Illinois. No longer the case. The new bottles are designed like the old 1960 bottles. It was purchased by Luxco a few years ago, say around 2015, and they went back to the old squared off uh, bottle, uh, heavily embossed fancy bottle. Don't know if the recipe has been changed. I have no evidence. Uh, I did see some old 1960s advertisements and they were saying 80 proof back then. So might be the same recipe. Um, from what I could determine, okay, and there is a Lord Calvert website. It's nice, doesn't tell you too much. They show that there's a new Lord Calvert Black, which I believe has been on the market since around 2017. There's a Lord Calvert Peach flavor, which I've never seen, and there's the original. So they're saying, they are saying just what I mean is people writing articles that Calvert Canadian was started in 1964 by Seagrams. I did see some ads about that and they talk about it's the new kid on the block, it's a newcomer and all this. But then I saw some photos of bottles of Lord Calvert Canadian whiskey that were clearly older than 1964. The bottle I saw was probably 1934 with a cage and a cork and very different. Uh, so I couldn't figure it out except that maybe there was a Lord Calvert Canadian that was produced for the Canadian only market and maybe what Seagram's decided to do in 1964 was come out with a Lord Calvert Canadian for the U.S. market. It might have been the same recipe. I don't know. It's a mystery. I know it started in 1934 with Calvert distilling right after Prohibition in Baltimore, named after the first Lord of Baltimore, the people that started Maryland. And I uh, wasn't too successful, and Seagram's came in there and said, this is what I've read. You see, nothing official, but basically said, your stuff is junk. We want to buy the buy it, and they sold out, and they improved it. And then it was a really popular, expensive whiskey, Lord Calvert, American blended whiskey. I've seen the old ads from the 1930s, and they're, that's their selling point. Yeah, it's expensive, but it's carefully blended. It's select blend, and, and all of this. Um, and they even, they even broke down the ratios. This much 18-year age, this much 10-year age. It was pretty complex. Over time, that changed to where it was just a, a basic product, and I guess the popularity dropped. Um, Seagram's sold it off to Beam at some point. Beam decided, like I say, around four years ago, they didn't want it. Beam Suntory, so now it's Luxco of Missouri, Luxco. And there's a Lord Calvert, like I said. There's Calvert American, Calvert Extra, which has been around. Okay, the American one. Then there's the Canadian, the black, and the peach. I would like to try the black. I had a chance to buy it in Georgia last year. I passed on it, and I'm regretting it at this very moment. This I bought at um, a store on U.S. Highway 90 business route westbound in Marrero, Louisiana. Value saver. I saw this one bottle on the shelf for $10.99 and I said, I'm thinking, I bet you I'll never see it again. And I never did. So I bought it. Uh, I don't think it's sold in Louisiana anymore, but I've eaten those words before. Saying that and turn around, there it is. But I haven't seen it but that one time. All right. And it, like I said, this is an older bottle. I don't know. I'll see if I can figure out a date. Um, I see that there's a good number of video reviews, video reviews, and I intend to watch those. Don't see anything. Uh, there's 11 stamped on the bottle, so it could be a 2011. It's probably what it is. Here we go. Here's a date. I oh, can't figure that stuff out. It's a bunch of numbers. It doesn't even matter. Um, 
Typical Canadian color, the gold, slightly amber gold. You get that with Canadian whiskeys. Canadian Club, this. Canadian Limited, rich and rare, so on. The smell, okay. Um, now the black, I didn't see an age statement. It just said it was like a more premier, probably longer age, better ingredients or whatever. Get a lot of corn, whiskey, a lot of grain, whiskey, grain, column still grain, alcohol. That's the base. However, there's some flavoring in there in the aroma. I can pick up, they're probably adding a good deal of rye, a relatively good deal of rye. How about rum? I think so. Brandy? Probably. What about bourbon, American bourbon? This could be true. They're very loose on allowances for added ingredients in Canada. All right. And when we say natural flavors, we mean natural distilled products. It has to be wine aged at least two years in small wood. I think that's the old. Okay. But it's not. It's there's a lot of um, latitude. Ah, caramel. Some light licorice, like the black licorice, but a light application of it. It actually smells pretty good. Now, I don't know how it's going to pan out in taste challenges. That's where the, the rubber hits the road. I can brag on these things, and then you put them in taste challenges. Oftentimes, they break down. But so far, it's coming out nice, um, really nice. Bottled in Illinois. Okay, the new ones are bottled in Missouri, the current. Does it taste like the Sazerac Canadian whiskeys? Your Canadian Limited, rich and rare, rich and rare. No, it doesn't. It's more in line with the Canadian Club, which we know is coming from Brown Orman, right? Right. Suntory. <laughs> I can't keep up. I can't keep up, but it's hard. Canadian mist comes from brown foreman. Um, so there's some of that crossover honeycomb flavor like you get with honey, like actual honey. And not bad honey. It's pretty good. Sugary sweet. Candy corn. Some Definite dried fruit cake fruit like you get in the Mylar bags, the candy fruit cake fruit cake fruit, there is that for sure. If you don't like sweet candy whiskeys, this could be unappealing. This is, in the flavor there's no licorice. You get that with, with the uh, Canadian Limited and the Rich and Rare, you get licorice. It's not in it. Oh, in the Canadian Hunter you get that too, but it's not it's not really licorice, but it tastes like it. Medium mouthfeel, so typical whiskey mouthfeel. And a moderately lingering finish. The taste hangs around, it doesn't drop right off, doesn't hang around and become cloying. It's moderate. Uh, nice alcohol eggs as well. Uh, Liquor.com isn't giving it a good score. Proof 66, they don't really have any current scores, so don't think they're too high. I like the way it's swishing around, it's got some wateriness. Uh, has it changed with the Luxco per purchase? I tend to doubt that because I think they sell the recipe. They don't want to alienate people that have been drinking it for years and years. Um, you get these kind of classic brands like Lord Calvert. You start messing around with the recipe and the flavor too much. I mean, maybe you could tweak it and they wouldn't notice. But you'd make some big changes and I think you you risk alienating people. But I don't know. I can only go buy this bottle, which I think is about eight years old. Is it worth ten ninety nine? From what I'm tasting right now it is. Um, I think John Neely said he can get the current bottle for about seven ninety nine. And um, 
I just, I don't know. So, it's got stereotypical Canadian labeling, got the uh, crown, Dominion of Canada, you know, the British Royal, British Commonwealth Royal Family, the lions, the sort of the Newfoundland type flag, uh, old uh, Union flag idea there, maple leaf, and so on imported. Can it be purchased in Canada itself? Can you buy this in Canada? I don't know. I didn't do any LCBO research. May, might be some of the Canadian viewers like Shane and Michael might know. They would know. So, how would I score this? Um, hmm. It's almost a lemon. Is that a lemon peel? There's something. Think this is better than the typical inexpensive Canadian blended whiskey. I do think that at this initial point, first tasting ever in my life, I am picking up some wood. <clears throat> the honey, the sugar, brown sugar, no char, I don't think. Is it better than I expected? Yes. I would recommend it from what I'm tasting right now. I'm going to go with 92 out of 100. I'm going to say A minus 92. And I'm hoping that when I throw it into the taste challenges, it's going to be better and better and better. I don't know. Would I buy the Canadian, the Calvert Canadian Black blended? Oh, I'd buy that that fast if I saw it. I regret that. It was $11.99. It was on sale. It's probably about $16.99 normally. Big mistake, but it happens, you know. You go against your better judgment. So, sorry for the long video. These are other ones I have lined up. Looking to tackle those soon. The Crown Royal Blenders Mash, formerly Bourbon Mash. Still can find those around, Bourbon Mash. James Fox from 1975, year of the introdu its introduction. The Northern Lights from the 1960s. Yeah, so... Laissez les bon temps Thanks for watching this Canadian whiskey review. And I'm going to end this review by saying, y'all, come on down to southeastern Louisiana.